So you're wondering what to do to help yourself breed the colubrids? Well, the number one thing that we always talk about is called brumation. Now, brumation is very, is, in another word, uh, hibernation. Well, in this video, we're going to learn about how we do it here at MB Care Reptiles, where we basically take our colubrids and put them through a cool down during the winter to make sure that they're ready to breed during springtime. Hey guys, Brian from MBK Reptiles here, and in this video, we're going to learn about brumation on our colubrids. So we're going to talk about how we actually help our animals brumate and go through the winter time, go through this phase of uh, hibernation, in some words, that they basically creates them a season when it comes time for spring that they all breed at the same time. The main reason is not because we want uh, to give them like a hibernation period to breed them, but really more about creating a season where they're all going to breed at the same time. That is really our main goal. So in this, in the last video, we talked about what we did before brumation. And then we talked about how we would put the animals into brumation. Now, currently we're end of February and our animals are about two weeks left before we take them outside of brumation. And I'm gonna tell you guys how we do this. Now, once it comes out time in the fall, late fall, depending when you're ready, it can be any time from November to December, you start bringing the temperature down. You gotta make sure that your animals are emptied, that they have finished eating um, for probably, they haven't been feeding for about three weeks. Now, once that happens, then you start bringing the temperature down slowly, probably five degree Fahrenheit every three to five days, just bring it down until you hit it. For us, a sweet spot of around 55 Fahrenheit. That's where we want to keep them at. Um, how we do that, because depending where you're located, sometimes it's a little bit harder. People, in their, if you're doing it at home, uh, you might have a basement, um, maybe like a, just like a cold room somewhere or whatnot. Try to find a closet that you can keep them cooler. Um, we tend to do that. So what we do is we actually have a vent and we can hear that vent. I don't know if you guys can, but we have a vent that basically takes the air from outside, brings them in. We're in Montreal, which is freaking cold during the winter. So it's very easy for us to bring the temperature down. So we just have a vent that goes basically outside and we have our little thermostat where we basically just set around 55 and then whenever it's too hot, it just brings in some cold air and cools the room down. So that's really our process that we do. Now, what do we do during brumation? That's when you can start to breathe and calm down. You gotta get organized before all hell breaks out. Because once the spring happens and you have so much work to do when it comes to breeding, when it comes to like uh, collecting eggs, then taking care of your babies, then even selling your babies. Well, in future videos, we're gonna go through all those different process on how we do it but in today we're really going to concentrate on what we do during brumation so it's really time for you to get organized so what we do we're in the in the last two weeks so what we're going to do is we're going to change all our labels make sure everything gets labeled properly uh, make sure that all the containers are um, clean we'll clean all the bins out we'll change all the substrates and make sure that when they come out of brumation that they are in perfect condition and perfect shape ready for the breeding season so what happens in that time it's so cold that the animals you could actually see are very um in a like slow motion state so all you can see is maybe a little bit of peas just because we still keep giving them water now the water we we don't change, we try to change the water every week, but maybe it can be even every 10 days because it stays cold. So you can like put your finger inside the water bowl and see if it feels a little bit um, like gooey. Now, if it doesn't feel gooey, then your, your cup is all good. And then you can leave that water in, maybe add some fresh water. And then that's, that goes, you can see like they're, their breathing is so much slower. Like, I mean, she'll, she, this female here, this palmetto female, she will just like pull out her tongue, but very, very slowly. 
like when she pulls it out and then her breathing, everything is just on slow motion at this point. For example, we have another one right here that is, <laughs> this male is huge. And you can see like, he, he does seem to be breathing a little bit more. He seems to be a little bit more active, but it's still normal. He's still uh, just moving slowly and everything is fine. I mean, they're not sleeping and not moving. They're still alive and well. It's just their metabolism is su on a super slow motion mode, you know? So what we're gonna do is we're, as we're going through all that, we gotta monitor their weight. We gotta make sure that they're actually not losing weight. It's very important that they don't lose weight. If ever you do see animals that do lose weight, we always find a few, like a handful, like from two to five animals in our whole collection that at, during the brumation that they'll start losing weight. So we'll pull them out. They weren't ready for that. And then we'll just start feeding them right away. We don't want to lose any animals at that point. So that's really our process of the brumation on what we do. Now, in two weeks, what happens is that we start bringing the temperature up. Now you don't want to bring the temperature up slowly like you do when you bring the temperature down. You got to bring it a little bit faster because the second you reach certain temperatures, their metabolism starts to work and then they're going to lose weight much faster. So within a 10 day spike, uh, <clears throat> we're going to go from 55 all the way to like 78 room temperature ish. And we're going to start feeding them at that, that point. Now, once we're going to start feeding, don't overfeed them right away because they're their stomach is empty. So we start with very, very, very small prey. And then from that point on, we'll get to another video. And then if you like this types of video, and then if you're learning a few things here and there, uh, if you're doing it a different way, actually comment down below, let me know how you do it. If you're doing it at home, let me know how you brumate your colubrids. We're lucky enough to have a facility and have a system doing so. But people have cre very creative ways of brumating. So share it with the people share it down below because there's probably someone that's going to read it and if you've been successful then it might help someone else so make sure you share that passion share that knowledge and until next time make sure you subscribe to this channel and no stress to the next video